quick snapshot just on what I'm going to cover today and uh, going to be going into content marketing and I'll give you a little, bit, a little sense of who we are and how we factor into this space. But um, did want to call out, uh, we're going to, uh, if you want, one thing we added this year was a, uh, a gift card to uh, Crag Hoppers, if you know Crag Hoppers, the apparel company. So if you guys want to win, to walk out of here with 200 bucks, free gear, um, drop your business card in the bag, that'll be walked around here during the show. But uh, so a quick sense of GLP, We've, we're actually celebrating our 10th anniversary this year, uh, which is exciting. Started in 2008, which seems, which is a very long time ago. But uh, we're a full service content marketing agency. You know, we started in production uh, as a production company, but for myself, I always knew that content would become a commodity. And it has, content's everywhere. So many great producers, storytellers out there. But I think what more importantly for us was the business side. How can we help the travel industry, not just do good, but generate business and good business when you look at tourism. Um, we've won a lot of awards, we just won the, uh, Second uh, year in a row, the number one adventure travel film, which is exciting. So uh, we also do a lot of work in food travel. And we, we partner with so many different groups out there. So many, from our standpoint, so many key stakeholders. So you look at DMOs, hotels, operators, the media. Really, it's a very stakeholder-driven model. And not just creating great content, but getting that content out to the market. And that's where the content marketing comes into play. Um, and we've also become really a, a thought leader in it, trying to help push the envelope, not just in initiatives like sustainable tourism, but also looking at trends and data and analysis. I do a lot of work in the ROI of storytelling. So again, looking at the business side of uh, not just producing great content, but uh, how it's going to help drive business forward. And lastly, uh, this is our 10th anniversary, as I mentioned, so we are looking for, and if you have any, any ideas, grab my card at the end or just go to our website, what is the best sustainable tourism story of 2018? Something that we're going to film this year, and we've gotten actually a lot of submissions, and so it'll be an exciting project for us. Uh, been a little overwhelming getting a lot of, a lot of ideas from around the world. So secondly, again, where we've been, we've been in over 30 destinations now in uh, over the past 10 years, produced over 200 videos. And our model, like I said, um, is not just looking at the strategy, but the distribution. You know, you could have the best content ever, but if you can't get it out to your target audience, and this is what I'll talk about today, it's so crucial. You need to be able to identify your audience. What is that strategy? How are you going to reach it? And I'll talk about some of these issues today and uh, how are you going to get that content out to that market. So today, going to look at, look at storytelling in general, content marketing. That really is, you're seeing video just become such an important tool. Um, but I think there's a big difference in what's out there right now and where the content could go. You look at engaging content out there, and that's really the key. High quality content that's really going to engage and move the envelope and really get people interested, not just in your product, your service. Uh, and so I'm gonna, we're going to look at some of these trends and challenges today. So first off, millennials. Everyone's been talking about millennials extensively the last two, three years. Uh, and I, I really think, we really see that 2018 is going to be about everyone. Let's face it, millennials was, the, was one of the first generations to really embrace social media. But everyone is online now. Generation Z coming up the back door, the next generation, even Gen X. And, and looking at the boomers, everyone's connected to the de devices. Some are obviously more savvy than others, but this year it's, it's about cross-generational. How can you reach all the different uh, audiences that you want to reach because of the connectivity that we have now with digital and social? And so really looking at uh, how are you going to, what lifestyle and activity are you going to connect with? And one I'd want to call out is the adventure space. Everyone wants to have an experiential journey nowadays in travel. And adventure is one of those where it crosses multiple generations. Uh, so you have your Gen Z, your Gen X, the millennials, and the boomers. Everyone wants to have that unique experiential uh, experience. And it also is really more cost effective. It allows you on the marketing side to have your content uh, similar, just trying to target those different generations. So uh, it, it allows some scalability because your content is, is looking at one activity, in this case adventure, and just tailoring it to each of those demographics. So on the notion of uh, 
adventure. I'm going to showcase a brand new film we just produced. Uh, really an exciting story looking at adventure in a remote area of Indonesia. Anyone been to Raja Ampat? Anyone? I hadn't even heard about it until we were approached about the idea. So this is a, a small archipelago and you'll see it. It'll show you just uh, just west of Papua New Guinea. If you know that part of Asia, uh, it's, it literally was uh, going to a, an unknown world. We do a lot of work in storytelling on emerging destinations and Raja Ampat is absolutely, uh, we were there for six days, saw almost no tourists, there's no hotels, no development. So really we saw it as an exciting opportunity, not just to tell a great story, but also to really open up an area to a target audience. So we're specifically in the content we produced, all the social media content is targeting the adventure, the sustainable, the luxury audience and travelers, not going mass market, uh, this is an area it's very difficult to get to and uh, you know we again we spent six days on a yacht going throughout these islands and uh, quite a quite a great story but I think more importantly quite an opportunity to target the adventure audience uh, for Indonesia so let's uh, kick this off the Jampat is a place where you can get lost in nature The name Raja Ampat comes from the four kings, which is Misol, Waigeo, Salawati, and Batanta. Hundreds of small, small islands, rock, islet, the birds, the plants, and the people. You can go scuba diving, you can go snorkeling, which is amazing, kayaking, trekking, find a new species that no one else has seen before. The best way to explore Raja Ampat is by boat. It's like you have a floating hotel and you go diving or snorkeling from the boat and then um, you do your thing. Because of the vast area, you don't get too many people at one place. So you can be at one particular place and be on your own, really. I love to see people going like, wow, look at this. They go in the water and see all this beauty of the underwater. They are flabbergasted. Some of them, um, they come back to the dinghy or come back on board. They just like cannot speak for a few minutes. I was born and grew up in Jakarta. Uh, as a young boy, I used to sit down in front of the television watching Jacques Cousteau and his Calypso going around the world, including the area of Indonesian water. And I was so fascinated and I thought to myself, I would like to be like him. My father played a very important role for me because he was the one that introduced me to tourism in Indonesia. Now I'm taking people to this exotic, beautiful, amazing places that makes me feel very, very happy. I'm the luckiest man in the world. I love to see the expression of people first time they step their foot on the boat and experience new places. For me, it's a wonderful feeling to share it with them. I feel blessed. Raja Ampat for me is a never-ending exploration. I need like a 200 years to explore this whole area, or 300.
So for us, there's a lot of different ways we could tell that story. And we really saw the best way to tell the story is with a local. He grew up in the area. He knows those islands so well. He loves the water. And again, he ended up being a great character for us to tell this story and really convey the uniqueness and hearing his journey and his connection to the area and tourism. So again, how are you going to tell that story? It really, it's finding someone who's really going to really talk from the heart. So connecting to your, your target audience. So looking at some marketing solutions and again, looking at adventure uh, as one example of a lifestyle and experience in tourism that's really gonna allow you to hit multiple generations at that same time. At the same time, you really wanna know your niche. Is it adventure? Is it luxury? Is it sustainable? Is it food? You know, there's so many different markets out there and you really wanna identify that audience that you're going after versus just trying to hit everyone. Um, and, and that's a difference of the content you're seeing. When you see content online that's targeting you, that means obviously some metrics have been done to target you, but then it's also you have a more personal connection to it. So again, knowing your niche audience and who you're gonna to try to connect. Um, the inspiration side, 66% of people before they uh, book a trip nowadays, are looking at video before they go. They want to get a sense of what's this experience I'm going to have. Again, 66%, over half of the people are looking at videos uh, before they go on a trip to really get a sense of the experience they're going to have. And that Raja Umpat, again, watching that video and really seeing, boy, this is something I really want to experience firsthand. But I think also, though, what's important and now, there's so many great tools, and many of you know this, Facebook Analytics, Google, um, even Instagram now, and even YouTube, you can go into Twitter and LinkedIn, they all have tools that you can tap into. And that geo-targeting to try to reach your audience is so important. So important because it's gonna give you so much data to analyze, but also, you know, you're also gonna get that engagement that you want with content because it's reaching people that wanna be connected by you because you're, you're targeting them. So um, that connection to your target audience is so important. Second trends, and I got three trends today. Second trend is really that video first, and you're seeing it. Anyone that goes onto Facebook nowadays, you're inundated by video. Last year's talk, I talked about how in 2019, 80% of the video of uh, the content on Facebook is going on Facebook is going to be in video. Well, we're pretty darn close to that right now. There's so much video content, and why? Because it's a it's an effective way to really connect with people, um, just watching something that's moving, and that's really the key to it. I think the the challenge I think that some of these social channels are seeing is there's a lot of not great content out there and it sort of floods and gets overwhelming with people. So again, difference in quality versus quantity. But I think one of the trends definitely, I mean, videos can definitely continue to dominate social. Uh, Facebook Live, these live opportunities, we're doing it today, here, now. Um, that is gonna be becoming that much more competent. We all have phones, they're always on, hopefully charged, fully charged. Uh, but uh, you're also seeing things like Instagram stories. That's really starting to take over. Um, and, and, you know, it's really mimicking, obviously, Snapchat. But it's, it's just a little more user-friendly to multi-generations. And so you're seeing a lot of trends where there's a lot of competition and, and positioning. Um, short video content, definitely. I mean, we're now, so much of our business has changed. We used to produce five-minute, seven-minute videos, and then it dropped to three to five-minute. Now it's two to three minutes. Now it's a whole uh, suite of content, 15, 30, 45, 60, one, two minutes. So again, it depends on the channel and the audience you're trying to reach. Uh, but short is, is definitely uh, the way to go, and especially on the marketing side, when you have consumers planning very far in advance, but also very last minute. So destinations like Indonesia or others need to have content in their arsenal on a regular basis and having short content that's going to allow. At the same time, though, I'm talking about the growth of video. I think the issue that's running in is this oversaturation. There's too much content out there. And how do you differentiate? Well, definitely from our standpoint and what we see is the quality. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times we talk to a potential uh, partner or organization we're going to work with and they just want to do things as cheap as possible but and and that's okay you know that's uh, and there's a lot of different content producers out there but I think what we see ultimately is you get what you pay for but more importantly you want that shelf life you want to be able to you're going to Raja Ampat in Indonesia one time we're not going back there a second a third time we're going there once and the content and the quality and the depth and breadth of content we produced they're going to be able to use for three years 
So again, it's that quality content that really is going to differentiate your content out there because it's engaging and it's good and people say, I really want to connect that. So again, in this oversaturation issue, the quality of the content is something to just to think about and be conscious of and look at the long-term lifetime of it when you look at the budget and how, how much to invest into it. So a second film, uh, anyone seen this film? I know some people have gone to a couple sessions I've done, but uh, uh, Man at the End of the World, this was a story that won last year, uh, Best Adventure Travel Film of 2017. Again, it was the second year we won it. The, we won the previous year with a film out of Peru and Machu Picchu. But uh, I wanted to show you two short socials, not the, the full five minute length. Um, so sorry for those that want to see it. It's a great story of a husband and wife team that are literally in the middle of nowhere down in southern uh, Chile, southern South America, Tierra Fuego. Um, great story just on how uh, this, this was land he had in his family, you know, thousands and thousands of uh, acres or hectares, and uh, he got it through his father. His father went down there, an area he, it took him two days on horseback to get to where he is, and now he's raising his family there, and, but now they've built a road. So in the beginning, the story is uh, people thought he was crazy. Why would you go to this remote area by yourself on horseback uh, only to be by yourself? Uh, but it was the beauty and the majesty, and one of these socials you'll see uh, and but now they just recently built a road that goes right by his uh, his his compound and uh, his estancia, and now he says, you know, okay, you thought I was crazy earlier. Look, he's brilliant. So again, but the story was him just seeing this area that was just really captivated him. So, but I'm going to show you two socials that are very different, um, different messages, different audience they're trying to reach, and it'll give you a sense of the overall story uh, and this really amazing emerging destination in Tierra Fuego. So here's the first. Nunca pensé después en terminar en, en turismo, pero. Mire, basta mirar el paisaje para decir qué es, qué es lo que lo trae uno, no sé. No. Empecé a traer extranjeros a caballo, cruzando la cordillera a pescar y ahí me empezó y empecé a conocer que viene gente muy interesante, conversa muchos temas que, o sea, realmente es entretenido, así que no. Mi idea es construir una más, pero este lugar si tú pones muchas cañas lo vas a perder. Claro que el cambio va a cambiar muchísimo el cielo de la tierra, eh, porque bueno, ha cambiado. Ahora mis hijas, ellas que hagan algo más, es cosa de ellas. Ahora hay que disfrutar del lugar para mí. Eso me dice mi señora todos los días, <ríe> machuca, ya hiciste suficiente. Me dice. So that's a, that, that sort social, it's just a minute dives into his character, his personality a little. Again, it's not looking at the broader five minute, three minute version, but it's really diving into him as a person. So go in, let's, let me show you this other piece and you'll see the big difference in, a, again, a totally different, we were here for four days. So all the content we produced was over a four day period, but we knew ahead of time the different elements we wanted to capture. So you see two different, one's going into someone's personality, their individual, what's important to them, their, their journey, their path, and then another is just a quick snapshot of different footage, scenery, a lot of landscape, a lot of drone footage that we're able to really get you a sense of the inspirational of, boy, this is an area I want to check out, someone that likes that adventure in that remote location. So again, um, having that strategy in place and looking at social content and really knowing who that audience is, that niche audience, and that, again, what I said earlier, that cross-generational 
professional experiences you're trying to connect with. So looking at the social media overall, uh, that strategy of timing was crucial. When we made the film, The Man at the End of the World, we had the very specific number one goal of we wanted to win this competition. We wanted this film to be the number one adventure travel film of 2017. That was our top line goal. And everything that we did underneath that was focused on that initiative, that, that target. And so the timing of our launch uh, and, and how we were gonna get this content out there to the market was specifically trying to engage, get people excited and really see the authentic, authentic story behind what we produced. So again, having that strategy in place, leveraging existing partnerships, we got 10 earned media placements for it. We had 20 uh, partners, stakeholder partners that marketed and promoted. So again, that outreach was so important. It was very targeted. We had a long timeline. We knew the schedule. We knew who we were gonna try to reach at what time, knowing that certain people were gonna be more beneficial for us to hit earlier because then they could ripple, had a ripple effect with other folks. So again, that strategy was so important. Um, and uh, ironically, in that marketing campaign that we did, we only spent $50 on paid social. Uh, there were very specific rules of how much you could spend, uh, and but we only spent 50 bucks. And you look at the exposure and the global recognition that we got for that film uh, through earn media and engagement with our partners. But ultimately, that distribution strategy, the quality of the content was what was most important. And the breadth and depth of that content, and it, which allowed us, having a deeper, richer story, allowed us to create all these different social versions, which again, we wouldn't have done it if it was a very simple story, you know, just shot, you know, one cameraman, very low budget. Uh, so again, having a little bit better, uh, bigger team allowed us to get more content, hence a stronger distribution play. So the third trend I wanted to talk about, and this is very timely now, it's unbelievable uh, for those that are just in the West, and I think in the US, uh, you know, being from the US myself, um, boy, there's a lot of action going on right now. Um, when you look at uh, just engagement, it's really exciting time, I think, across the board, and, and it's definitely hitting the travel and tourism industry. Um, but I think the point is, the, the, what consumers are wanting, what we want, we're all consumers here, we want brands that we really believe in to take a stand. And in the US, you're seeing it with companies like Patagonia and others that are really pushing the envelope. They're not selling product, they're selling messages, they're selling points. Patagonia actually, really surprisingly, is getting very politically engaged and active. It's a core mandate for them nowadays. They've sort of turned the corner. Oh, and they sell products too. But uh, um, I'll, I'll make the point, 66% of people, of us, uh, want brands to make a social or political change. And that's happening. I mean, we want, again, brands that you like, that you want to engage. So our wonderful uh, president, I won't even say his name uh, because he's really not a president, but uh, anyway, uh, he uh, instituted last year the travel ban, which just was, uh, how can I say, not something that should have happened. But what ended up happening, looking at the private sector and looking at municipalities uh, in the US, both New York and Los Angeles put out campaigns specifically coming, saying, come to us, we'll, we'll take everyone, we accept everyone, the door is open. Here, this hashtag, everyone is welcome. New York did the exact same thing. And ironically, over 2017, what happened is tourism dropped over across the board when looking at the US market because of this travel ban and all the disruption that he created. But New York and LA, both went up. So again, not that their campaigns specifically were a success, but ironically, both of those cities really pushing the envelope, um, you know, uh, created some, some positive change. Uh, secondly, uh, society change. You're seeing it now. You're seeing the wonderful change going on across the board and it's hitting everyone. The Me Too movement and just women empowerment in general, it's just been really cool. The, 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 the embrace of diversity, the embrace of uh, just streamline, let's everyone get on the same page is really exciting and again, uh, brand, consumers like us want brands, 88% want us, want those brands that we love to really push the envelope when it looks at uh, change. So ultimately though, we're all consumers, we're all purchasers, 
we want our brands, we want to invest our money in brands that we connect with. And how do you do that? That is really the question and the challenge when you look at some of the issues, because how do you connect? How do you connect with a brand? How does that brand connect to that tar target audience? Well, one of the ways is content marketing or storytelling, really to engage. And again, if people want to invest in brands they believe in, then the brand needs to look at it and say, what can we do? How can we create content that is going to be transparent, holistic, and really have that message that our audience wants? And it's really exciting to see. There's going to be so much change going on if you look at the advertising world, all the uh, traditional uh, advertising that's going on, at least in the US market, it is going to do a 360 in the next. It's already happening with some brands really getting out there and creating content as we speak. So on the notion of a brand really trying to connect to an audience and really having creating change, uh, if anyone knows LifeStraw, they're a, uh, actually a water filter company uh, really pushing safe water. And for every product you buy, we've been working with them. We've produced six films with them just this past year. And uh, every bo uh, bottle you buy, any filter, um, it provides safe water for a school child in Kenya for the, a year. And so the concept behind it is unbelievable. And the amount of resources and money that they've put into this CSR, you know, uh, cause, you know social responsibility initiative uh, is, is, is astounding, uh, really the investment. And so it was, has been really fun for us to work. We shot this film you're gonna see right now for four days last year. And really, again, it's looking at not just safe water, but also community and education on the importance of safe water. We actually did a film that I showed yesterday uh, on safe water uh, in Kenya, but also in the US. And I think the one of the things I really loved about that story was, uh, you know, most people assume that, well, the developing world has unsafe water. Well, the Western world has unsafe water too. So it was really nice to put us on the same playing field saying, hey, you know, safe water is an issue in the US, for instance, uh, too. And that was really nice to sort of try to level it out. But let me show you this again. It's a, it's a private company that's doing really a cause-based marketing initiative through video, through story, and I'll let it speak for itself, uh, really, you know, talking about women empowerment in Kenya. They say that what a man can do, a woman can do better. And stronger women makes a stronger family. Eventually, we have a stronger community and a stronger country. It has always been the responsibility of women to get water from whatever sources, no matter the distance and most of this water was never treated. One of my major roles as an area coordinator is to educate the schools on the life straw. All these children in the schools take back the knowledge at home. In Swahili, we say majisafi, which is basically safe water. Majisafi husonga kando, now, since we have access to clean and safe water, the children have more time to focus on education and bring out their potential in different abilities. Viola is a role model. She has that power. I normally introduce her, this is my boss. And then I tell the girls they should work very hard at school to have education so that they should be like Viola. All the potential that was hidden in women in the kitchen is now being felt out there in the community.
and I'm so excited to find out that I'm expecting a baby girl. Now I have a partner that can support me in advocating for women issues. When I get out of that school and all you hear is life strong, I am satisfied. Out there, I'll be empowered. I'll be an empowered woman. The best, the, the, uh, the best part in shooting this film, again, we were there in Western Kenya for four days, was she was eight and a half months pregnant. We all know it's nine months. She's two weeks away from delivering, and she was a rock star. So just walking with her, having her walk down, and we just called it the belly. Like, she just, uh, but again, it was just such a great story. She was so open and just such a great person and character to be with and spend time with. And again, that just made, that was night and day, turned a, a basic story into something that was really moving and really, you just felt the power and the energy that she had. Um, Okay, we got a rally here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go through these a little quick just for time purposes. And also too, here, um, my colleague Karina is gonna walk around this blue bag, drop in, she's gonna walk up the different rows, I'd do it quick, um, just go up the different, throw in a business card, we're giving away 200 bucks with uh, crag hoppers just at the end very quickly, so you can walk away with some new travel gear. But looking at uh, brands, and again, just looking at what Life Straw did, just to wrap this up, uh, launching a campaign, we launched this film on International Women's Day, March 8th. So again, very specific on why we were getting this content out, and we wanted to hit that market for a very specific reason, and we got over 100,000 uh, video views in 24 hours. So again, it's very timely, that timing is very important. Knowing your target audience, again, so important. Don't try to be everything to any, everyone. Go after your audience. Like I said earlier, that purchasing power by consumers now, you know, people want a brand that they can invest in and have a long-term relationship. So going after that target audience versus trying to be everything for everyone sort of the vanilla aspect. Uh, and then look at, look beyond just the brand and look at your staff, look at your colleagues, look at your industry partners. Again, that content we put out there, we really embraced the whole industry that was supporting safe water, the cause that was going on in Kenya. And uh, so again, it was a very holistic approach in getting uh, content out there. So just in wrapping up here, um, looking at your 2018 marketing strategy, First and foremost, I've said this several times, connect with your audience, that, identify that audience you're trying to reach. Sometimes it's more difficult than you realize because uh, you want to sort of be, you know, connect with as many people as possible. But again, having that niche, that engagement, that relationship, that long-term relationship uh, with, with a specific audience is what's going to drive things moving forward. Can't tell you that uh, more. We re see it all the time in uh, with working with a destination that just wants to try to reach all audiences. Um, and again, emotionally driven storytelling, you just saw that. Um, be strategic. The work that you do leading up to content is the most important, con most important work. Yes, producing the content is important. Yes, getting the content out to that target audience is important. But the strategy and work of just getting down with a blank piece of paper or whatever the tool is, your phone, what have you, Skype, uh, is so important. That's the building blocks and the structure. So that strategic approach to everything you're going to be doing is the most important step. And then lastly, look at the partners and relationships that you can tap into around the world uh, or locally or globally that you can reach into. Those partnerships are so important, it's going to help everyone in the end. So on that note, let me, uh, got a minute of questions maybe. But, uh, and I will say, um, I'll do this raffle in a second. So with Karina walking around, or you can even throw up your business card here and I can throw it into the bag. We'll give this away in, in, a, in a second. But any questions here? Um, here's the raffle, but any general questions, anyone? Hopefully this was good, hopefully you liked it. Day two.